In this video, we're going to learn how to use modifiers to make modeling go faster. Alright, so in the last lesson we learned the basics of box modeling. It's just starting out with a primitive, creating the segments that you need, and massing out the object in a very large way. We're not worried about details at this point. So now what I want to do is I want to start getting the rest of the larger details, like the arm. And I want to show you how to use modifiers in a way that will allow you to model non-destructively, and it will actually make your modeling go a little bit faster. Now, there is a little bit of thought that needs to go into using modifiers, because not all modifiers do the exact same thing. And sometimes they're not exactly self-explanatory. But for the most part, once you start to learn some of these different modifiers, you'll start to see key areas that you could use that particular modifier and make good decisions using that. So looking at this drone, you'll see that we have four arms. And what I want to do, essentially, is just model one of those and then allow the modifier to do the rest of the work for me. And the modifier that we're going to use is called symmetry. In my personal workflow, symmetry is probably one of the most important modifiers that I use. So to get started with this, what I need to do is I need to cut this object into symmetrical shapes. And so to do this, what I like to do is go to Edge Mode, and I will select one of the edges, and I'm going to hit Ring. Now what this does is it selects a set of edges that are parallel to one another. That is a ring. A ring is a set of edges that are parallel to one another. A loop is a set of edges that connect end to end, okay, and they come back around into one another. So looking at this, I want to connect this ring with a loop. So to do this, I'm going to use the Connect tool. Now I'm going to use the settings off to the right of that, and you'll see that by default it creates one segment, and it cuts it or connects those edges with a single loop right in the center. Now there are three parameters using the Connect Edges tool. In this case, you have segments, and you can adjust how many segments you actually want to create in that ring. Um, you also have pinch. Now pinch is going to allow you to spread or bring edges closer together. So you can spread them apart or bring them closer. Now you also have slide which will allow you to slide those edges along the existing topology. I'm going to zero out both slide and uh, pinch and then I'm also going to bring my segments back down to one because I just want to create a single segment right down the center. Go ahead and hit OK on that. And then we're going to do the same thing in the left view. So hit L on the keyboard. And let's select this edge. Let's use Ring. And then we already have the settings that we need. So I can actually just click Connect, and it will quickly create those edges. So here's what I have now. I have my model, and it's now broken up into four quadrants. So now what I can do is delete just all of them but one quadrant. So to do this, I'm going to go to the polygon mode. I'm going to go to my front view. I'm going to select all of these polygons. And then I'm going to hit delete. Now let's go to the top view. Let's make sure that we get this, the, this set of polygons right here. And then delete those. So now, how do I get that back? To do this, and actually, um, yeah, OK. I, I like that. So looking at this what we need to do is apply a symmetry modifier. So I'm going to go to the modifier list. I'm going to type in symmetry, or SY, and then it will drop down in the list to symmetry. Go ahead and click on that, and you'll see that it has created the other side of this object, and it has created it in the X direction. Now, if yours has been applied, but it, there is nothing there, if it looks like this, You'll want to turn on flip, so that way it will give you the mass that you need. In my case, I don't need that, so I'm going to turn it off. Now, what about the backside? How do we get that back? Well, to do this, we can add another modifier on top of this. And you can add multiple symmetry modifiers on it as you like. It only makes sense to do three different ones in this case because, well, we only have three axes. So let's go ahead and go to the modifier list. Let's type in SY symmetry. Left click on that 
in the modifier and you'll notice that we have two symmetry modifiers but there's only one showing up well they've both been applied but we're still using that x-axis here in this case let's use Z on the very top one so here you'll see that we now have our full object again now you might be wondering okay what was the point of doing that we had that before well remember we're setting it up to model things faster let me show you how this works with the modifier stack you'll see that we have three different um, objects in here we have symmetry symmetry and then edit poly if you were to step through those by left clicking on the second symmetry you would see how it looks now I have show end result turned on so let me turn that off and you'll see what it looks like at this point whenever you add modifiers it works from the bottom up so here's the original object that we had we applied that first symmetry it gave us this side and then we applied the last symmetry that gave us the opposite side of that so now let's go back down to editable poly let's turn on show end result so we can see what is happening in real time so let's go to polygon mode I'm going to select this polygon and then hold down control and select this polygon notice it's selecting the other polygons that are congruent to this and watch what happens whenever we start using things like extrude let's use the extrude tool and you'll see that it starts to extrude out and it's doing all of the work on the other three automatically here is the the power of using modifiers it allows us to do things on one part of the model and it will do that to the other parts now not all modifiers do this there are a specific set like I said and you'll start to discover those and you'll start to implement those in your own workflows so looking at this what I want to do is I want to extrude these out by group and then I'm going to extrude them out to a certain length let me go to my top view and let's extrude it out to let's say about 35 so I'm just gonna type that in and hit enter and then I'm gonna hit OK on that that will finalize that extrusion now you'll notice that I get this point right out here in the middle and what I want to do is I want to flatten that out so to flatten it out with those polygons still selected I'm going to use make planar you'll find that under the edit geometry rollout and here's make planar let's go ahead and click on that and it will average out the angle and then flatten it out the best that it can in this case it did a really great job and all I need to do is move this polygon out a little bit further to about this point now you'll notice that our move gizmo is giving us the views world space direction so we have X in this way and then Y it's going to be really hard to pull it diagonally uh, without getting it off a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the reference coordinate system of my move gizmo by clicking on the reference coordinate system drop down and then using local watch what happens to the gizmo see how it moves into the local direction of the polygons that are selected this makes it really really easy to start moving polygons around and gives you more freedom so now that we have that we have that in position let's go to our scale tool and I need to scale that widthwise to get this shape here so I can also use the reference coordinate system with the scale tool so let's switch it to local and then we're going to scale it on the Y axis scale that in to right about here and then let's go to our front view by hitting F and then we need to scale that in the X direction now it's the X direction based on the local direction of the polygons here so let's scale that straight down like this and then I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm going to move it straight down in the X to right about here now it's not going to be perfect at this point we're just blocking it in so scale and move as you need and then you'll notice here that these vertices at the top they're not really matching with the rest of our uh, geometry here so let's go to our perspective view and what I want to do now is I want to go to vertex mode and I'm going to select this vertex this one and this one so just these three outside vertices and then let's go to view again because I want to drag it straight down in the Z so let's go to our front view by hitting F let's drag that down in the Y and again we're using Y because it's the views space here so let's pull that down and there we go so now I have that everything is looking great and you'll notice that 
there might be a few things that are off about this. Like one thing that I'm that I'm seeing automatically is that the the top is not as round. We could add that geometry, but I want to talk about smoothing things out and just kind of previewing what it's going to look like using a smoothing algorithm. Now we could use a modifier called open subdiv, which is what I like to use, and I'm going to place that at the top. Now you'll notice that I had the editable poly selected and I added the modifier just above that. I want to make sure that this is added at the very top of my modifier stack. If you were to place one somewhere by accident, you can always left click and drag that up at the top. Notice the blue line that we get. That's going to indicate the position in which this is going to be dropped. So release that and you'll notice it's been dropped at the top. So if I hit Alt X, we can see what that looks like smoothed out and we can adjust the iterations to smooth it out a little bit more. I'm just going to go to 2 for now and let's go to our top view. Things are looking okay. They're not exactly where I would like them to be, but we will start to dial in on the, the final shape later. I just like to use this as a preview so that way I know what to expect as I'm going along. Now I'm going to turn off this modifier or hide it and it will bring me back to the top here, the symmetry. So now I can continue working and then just turn that on and off as I want to preview that. All right, perfect. So now that we have all of that ready to go, let's go ahead and move on into our next lesson where we're going to talk about using multiple primitives and how to join them to other objects to create complex shapes.